Welcome to another edition of the Insider Mailbag. I'm Jared Johnson. I'm coming to you from my home office. Well, I hope everyone's staying safe out there. You know, this week I want to do um, on our Friday mailbag, our traditional Friday mailbag, a video mailbag. Um, I'm going to do just recruiting, all recruiting. I'm going to answer all recruiting questions, and then on Monday, I'm, the the plan, the idea is to have a written mailbag um, with not just recruiting, but other stuff. We, we have a high volume of questions, some really good questions, so I'm going to split it into two, get more content for y'all. But So let's jump into this recruiting version of the Friday Insider Mailbag. First one comes from Josiah Tweezy, who wants to know which DBs are tech recruiting, which one ones are most likely to commit first. Well, that's a great question because I think defensive back is one of the biggest holes that this program has had for quite some time. Um, they really need both the volume and I mean, quantity and quality, basically, uh, of DBs. And I've been interested in, you know, since the everything's been shut down with the coronavirus and everything, um, the quarantine, uh, Tech is really, I don't know if this is because of this or it's a coincidence or just part of it, but um, seems like you know, new secondary coach Derek Jones has off, taken this opportunity to offer a lot of out-of-state uh, prospects, uh, a lot of guys that um, he had prior relationships with. So, and I mean, there are, I'll list some uh, in the story, some of those interviews, but I've interviewed at least a half a dozen out of state defensive back offers just, in, you know, I guess since March, you could say. Um, and I think on several of them, I think you have a foot in the door in terms of they like Coach Derek Jones a lot. I mean, you can tell this guy's a very good recruiter. He's He has these, these, these young kids, these recruits here. They appreciate what he's saying. Um, now, whether that's going to translate into them actually ending up at Texas Tech, I don't know. I, I always tend to think the closer to home in-state guys you have a better chance with. And so I'm going to give you a couple, couple of guys that, or at least one guy from Texas I, I feel strongly about, and that would be Chase Lowry. He's a six-foot cornerback out of Frisco. You know, Tech offered him in uh, February, and I talked with him, and, you know, he planned on visiting in March. I don't think he got the the, the chance to. At one point, I had him on a visitor list, but I don't, he didn't make it. He was going to visit later in March, but then, of course, everything got shut down, and he was unable to. So uh, the thing with Lowry that I like is one of your best recruiters are recruits you already have or guys who are already playing for you. And he knows a couple of guys, a couple of recruits anyways. Two 2020 signees, the first one being Kobe Miner, safety signee, and then Miles Price, uh, all-purpose back, a 2020 signee. He said he's close to both those guys and they really love Tech. They like the coaching staff. Um, oh, and then, of course, 2021 commit Duran Bradley is another guy he knows. So, I mean, it's not, I don't want to say that that is a big contributor to why guys commit, but it doesn't hurt. You're hearing good stuff from people you trust. It helps a lot. It goes a long way. So I think Chase Lowry is a guy to watch in terms of possibly being one of the first DBs to commit uh, to Texas Tech. And then I'm going to go another route. Uh, this guy is an out-of-state guy. He has a lot of Power 5 offers. I mean, um, and he's in the SEC country at Mississippi Gulf Coast. Uh, but Jadarius Perkins is a guy I talked to. And he was really fired up by the tech offer. I mean, I think that's actually what I put in the headline because he really liked what Derrick Jones had to say. Uh, he appreciated the opportunity from Texas Tech. And this, it's a, he's going to visit. So despite him having a lot of offers in the SEC country, even close to you know, Mississippi State, has offered since Tech. Uh, you know, Baylor has offered, actually, uh, in terms of Big 12 competition. But I, I think Tech has a really good opportunity with him because he likes Derrick Jones so much. So we'll have to see how that plays out. I don't know if he for sure ends up being a Red Raider, but I think there's a good chance, or at least Tech has a good chance with those two guys. All right, moving to basketball recruiting. Uh, Slayton67 wants to know, what's the deal with Kaminga? He means Jonathan Kaminga, the 2021, um, one of the top, if not the top, uh, recruit in the country. He's had Texas Tech in his top list every bit of the way. He says he's going to release a top five soon. He hasn't given an actual date, but he said the top five's coming, and I fully expect Texas Tech to be there in that top that top five. Um, one of the reasons is, of course, because his half-brother, Joel and Tomway, is on the Red Raiders. I think the opportunity for them two to play together would, would be special for them. But I don't think it's just that. I mean, look, Kaminga is really exactly what Coach Beard looks for. He's six seven. He's versatile. He can play inside. He can play out. He can be a ball handler for you. He can uh, be an on-the-ball defender, a great help defender. I mean, Kaminga is what uh, he's... 
Coach Bureau always talks about positionless basketball. I think is the is the popular term. Uh, you know, interchangeable guys and Kabinga fits the bill. So also Tech obviously has done a great job of developing his talent, putting guys in the league and Beard's short time here. So I think that is appealing to Kaminga. Now there are so many other facets to Jonathan Kaminga's recruitment, um, which usually comes with a guy who's so highly rated. I think one of the things, one of the misconceptions is maybe he might be a head case. I don't honestly don't know. Um, what I will say though is with a guy who's so high profile, every little thing is scrutinized, every little decision, every little thing that happens with the recruitment. So I think just keep that in mind. Everything's so you know overreported with a guy who's so highly rated. Um, but the bottom line is, you know, will is he going to reclassify to 2020? It looks like right now, no, he's going to stay 2021. Okay, um, so with Keeping that in mind, will Texas Tech still be in play? Do we think the Red Raiders are going to be there at the end? And I'm going to say yes. I think the, the longer this goes on, the more I hear about Kaminga's recruitment, the better I feel about Tech's chances. I think Texas Tech has a very, very good chance of landing Jonathan Kaminga. I don't think it's a slam dunk. It's a lock by any means. I don't think Ntambwe is definitely the main reason why it would be a lock, but I do think it is a contributing factor along with the other things I mentioned, and I think uh, Texas Tech, I think Auburn is somebody to watch, and then I think just him maybe going this, the, the new trend is uh, guys going straight to the G League and having kind of a different route than mo than like a regular guy going to the G League. We saw that with Jalen Green, another top prospect just from the 2020 class, so that might be a new trend, and the guys you know, get paid, they get to develop under, uh, with professional coaches, uh, so, that's something to watch, another option for, for Kaminga. But I I expect as long as his recruitment is open for Texas Tech to be involved, I fully expect him to be in the top five. Tech to be in the top five. All right, another basketball recruiting question. Uh, Denny wants to know, is Texas Tech still in the hunt for Matt Harms? As far as I know, absolutely. I mean, he released the top ten. Of course, he had a lot of suitors, a lot of schools calling him. He, he released the top ten, and Texas Tech was in it. Everything I've heard is even going beyond that. The Tech's in like a smaller group. Um, and I've heard the Red Raiders are going after him hard too. The Chris Beard wants him. Um, usually Chris Beard gets what, what Chris Beard wants, to be honest. So, I, you know, I, Harms obviously is very familiar with, with the Red Raider basketball program. And, you know, he would be able to play a lot. I think he would... He, he would probably start if he came to Texas Tech. I mean, he would be that missing piece, big guy, rim protector, um, athletic big. He's 7'3". Um, he's experienced. He's played in, you know, in March. He's played, in obviously, in the Big Ten. He's played in big games. He's exactly what I think this roster's missing right now. He would be a huge addition. I don't think he's a need, but I think he's the kind of guy that puts you over the top, or he puts you maybe from being one of the top 15 teams next year to being one of the top five teams next year. So, yeah, I think Matt Harms is important. I don't think he's – I'm not going to say he's as good as Tariq Owens was, but I think he fills a similar void that Tariq Owens did, if that makes sense. All right, this is a question I keep getting because – all right, Texas Tech's uh, – 2021 football recruiting class is off to a great start. Five commits. All five are in the Texas top 125. Two of them are four-star guys. The Red Raiders are in the top 30 nationally, in the, in, the, in the top five of the Big 12. So great start, but they're all offensive recruits. So guys, uh, fans have been asking me, this is the logical question after hearing all that positivity is, what about the defense? What are they going to do on defense? Well, look, it's Texas Tech, so obviously it's easier to recruit offensive players than it is defensive players. That being said, the Red Raiders... Uh, have, have, have made great strides with several defensive prospects. I'm going to give you uh, a, a couple of names, all right? Uh, Demarion Alexander is one out of China Springs, outside linebacker. Uh, he listed Texas Tech in his top four. I think the Red Raiders have a good shot with him, but right now I think he's leaning towards Minnesota. So, I mean, you can ask Adam Beck. I think that's a case where he goes up to Minnesota for a year, freezes his butt off, takes a look around, and says, where are all those beautiful Texan, Texan women? And I think maybe he comes back to Texas. So maybe you get Texas, maybe you get Demarion Alexander uh, after a year, you know, up in Minnesota. But I think right now things are leaning towards the Gophers for Alexander. But Tech is in the mix with him. He's visited. He likes the Red Raiders. Landon Watson, four-star defensive end. He's visited several times. Um, his best buddy, Chucks Chooks Dumboko, is your walk-on running back and primary punt returner right now. Um, he likes the coaching staff. He, he, he gets Texas Tech, but he has a lot of offers. He's a four-star defensive end. Um, I think 
what I've heard recently, Virginia Tech, he, I mean, Virginia Tech, it's funny, Tech and Virginia Tech are going to head-to-head -to -head for several prospects and defensive line prospects. And, uh, I mean, that's right now, that's your primary competition for a lot of guys. So it would be interesting to see if Tech can beat Virginia Tech, become the Tech, for Landon Watson, the four-star defensive end out of Hutto. Now, and I'll go ahead and, and say, go a grad transfer route um, and say, look, Justice Reed is a guy. He was at Florida. Uh, then he went to Youngstown State had, after suffering a bunch of injuries. Now he has a seventh year of eligibility, eligibility after having a tremendous year at Youngstown State. He's being recruited by so many schools, including the Red Raiders. He told me he wants to visit Texas Tech. And a lot of his visits got, got pushed back because of this you know, everything being locked down. So that's really messed up his recruitment. But he has gone on record as saying Virginia Tech is his leader right now, but he still wants to see some other schools, including Texas Tech. So we'll have to see how that plays out. And I have no idea what his timetable is because of because of uh, the delay in, in all those visits. All right, another guy is uh, Jadarius Perkins. I mentioned, uh, I mentioned him earlier in this video. He's a junior college cornerback at Mississippi Gulf Coast. I think you have a shot with him. All right. Uh, Alan Hay is a defensive tackle out of Florida. And, man, he loved Coach Randolph. He loves Coach Randolph. Uh, he's going to visit Texas Tech once again once things open up. Uh, and I think Texas Tech has a really good chance with him. Uh, I know he's coming from Florida. He likes Miami. Miami's offered him. Uh, but I think the idea of early playing time is something that could help land a guy like Alan Hay, six foot, 300 pounds, three-star defensive tackle uh, recruit. All right, Deuce Harmon is another guy. It looks like actually he's an Aguiline right now. I think there's 11 crystal ball picks in uh, for Deuce to go to Texas A&M. But, uh, you know, he's listed. Tech as one of his top schools, so I thought I'd mention him in, in this video. Crazier things have happened. He was already committed, I believe, to TCU at one point. So he may be a guy who bounces around and, and by the end of the cycle ends up a Red Raider. So we'll have to keep an eye, uh, eye on Deuce. And now on the other side of the country in California, I talked with Logan Applewhite. He's a 6'2", uh, 240-pound defensive end, kind of a weak side defensive end, pass rusher kind of guy. Great burst off the ball. Uh, you know, he goes to Cerritos. Uh, college there out in California. He's a junior college guy. Uh, he just had a tremendous freshman year where he produced 10 sacks, something like 20 tackles for loss in just 11 games. Um, he Paul Randolph actually offered him through his grandma. <laughs> he told his grandma he was offering Logan, so which was really cool. It's, you know, the way Logan was breaking down for me was a really cool family moment uh, in these crazy times. Um, but in his household, they really had, a, had an opportunity to celebrate there, that, uh, that opportunity from Texas Tech. So I think Logan's a guy to watch. He wants to visit. Now, this is a common theme, but, you know, to me, it's like uh, if you're a car salesman, you know, you're probably not going to sell a car to someone who hasn't test drove, you know, the car. So these guys got, you know, this, everything's got to open up. You got to get these, some of these guys on campus, show them what you have to offer. And then I think, you know, Matt, Coach Wells and then the position coach like Coach Randolph, um, uh, Coach Jones, Coach Cosgrove, some of those guys can start really landing these defensive prospects and can start evening out this commitment list some that, that's so offensive line heavy right now. But with that, I want to thank you all for watching. Thank you for all your great questions, and until next time.